Hey, this is Bar 64 guy, and today's patient, lamppost. Uh, problem is, lamppost is tripping the GFCI that is on the circuit whenever we get some uh, rain. And I think what's happening is well, there's probably a nick in the cable. I disconnected at the light bulb inside the lamppost, problem didn't go away. Disconnected at the uh, outlet box, problem went away. So I think it's a problem in the cable. I'm going to re replace it with this uh, watertight conduit. Uh, this I got off of um, the uh, Orange Big Box store. And this here I actually ordered online. Uh, and it's uh, pre-coiled uh, black, white, and green THHN uh, conduit wire. A 14 gauge solid. So that's going to get fed into the conduit. Obviously first step. Make sure that power is off and safe. Uh, this circuit actually runs off of this timer box. Uh, the timer box is actually fed by a wall switch as well. So not only do I have the wall switch turned off, but this timer is also off as well. So if somebody were to accidentally turn the switch on, um, I still wouldn't have power to that outlet. So uh, the circuit is safe and I can go ahead and work on it. I had previously removed the old cable and conduit. I attached the fitting for the new conduit, so I'm now ready for a dry fit measurement. Here we start with a dry fit. So I've got it plugged into the uh, coupler, routing the way the old cable did behind the shrubs. And then instead of it going to where the old cable was, which I couldn't tunnel under the uh, sidewalk given the concrete-like nature of the clay we have around here. I am leveraging the fact that the concrete sidewalk had broken and shifted and left a nice big gap. So with the help of my power washer, I have the soil cleared out underneath. You can see this is an old sidewalk. It's only about two and a half inches thick. I think they're supposed to be four inches thick nowadays. Um, so I've got this guy cleared out enough to drop the conduit below it. So that way, if uh, at some point this sidewalk gets replaced, um, the conduit can just get pushed down uh, to clear the new uh, sidewalk. And it's going to loop around. I got a little bit of a service loop there. And then it will go into the lamppost. So to make things easier, I'm measuring from the end that I'm going to be cutting off because that is a much shorter distance. I measured 12 foot 8. So this mark here is going to tell me that over here gets thrown out and this is the end that gets used. Non-metallic conduit can be cut with a sharp utility knife. Keep the edge as square as possible to ensure a good fit into the couplers were used. Since my conduit run was less than 50 feet, I used my 50 foot fish tape to pull the wire through it. Feed the tape, attach the wires, and pull them through. Make sure this bolt does not tangle or get caught up. This is where having a second set of hands helps. Slide the coupling nut over the conduit Feed the wires into the box, twist and push the conduit onto the coupler, and screw on the coupling nut to secure it. As I make the final connection here, I uh, just want to make a quick note here on GFCI outlets. Um, they typically have two sets of terminals. One side is the line, the other side is the load. Line side is where your feed is going to come in. Load is what's going to be protected by the GFCI. So not only are the two outlets protected, 
but anything connected to these load side terminals. So by having this conduit be fed by the load side, anything downstream will also be protected. So if there happens to be more current flowing through the hot than through the neutral, uh, which could indicate a leak to ground somewhere, the GFCI will trip and thereby protect what's downstream. Different GFCIs may have different terminal styles. This one happens to have the ones that slide in and get captured. Okay, just make sure everything is secure. Go back and check the hot side. Okay. Quick visual inspection. Wires look good. Once the wires are secured, push the GFCI back into the box, ensuring the wires form an S-curve and do not kink right at the terminals. Fasten the GFCI to the box with the two screws. I like to stagger them as I tighten them to help the device move into the box more evenly. Secure the cover plate. This weather type box uses four screws. Okay, with the conduit buried up to here, let's get the final length set. I'm just gonna do it by eye. So I've got a little channel set here, as you can see. I'm gonna leave the extra conduit and I'm gonna feed it into the lamppost, just in case in the future, somebody else decides, hey, I want the lamppost a few feet that way. So they'll have the conduit, they'll have plenty of it. So. I'm going to leave this as is, and I'll go a little bit extra on the wire. Granted, they won't be able to move it that far, but it's, I can just tuck this down there. Like with the conduit, feed the fish tape down the lamppost to the cable hole. Connect the wires and pull them up. This would have definitely been easier with a second person as the wires were getting hung up on the edge of the hole. I had to be very careful not to damage the insulation. Okay, since this is going to be up inside the lamppost and I cannot get a um, coupler onto here because this has already been cemented in, uh, I'm going to use a little bit of caulk to seal the, uh, the end here. <laughs> this is a leftover tube, so I had uh, <laughs> Let's get rid of that. It's a leftover tube, so it had a clog in it, and I just cut the end off. But... Let's at least get this guy coated. So that way this end of the conduit will be watertight. Uh, just because I'm not waiting for this to cure for 24 hours. I'm going to strain relief it with some tape. To hold that clock in place. And now we'll finish pulling it through. Alright, so there it is. There's the final run. Tucked in. I did have to pull the um, little cross beam out just to clear it, make it easier, but. Yeah, there's the wire coming out, ready to hook up. Okay, I've got the wire stripped. Now, one thing I do with solid wire when I get ready to put wire nuts on is I usually give it a little bit of a 
twist shape there. This is where it gets to be a pain because I have to hold the lamp post uh, head in place as well. Adding the bends to the solid wire helps keep it connected to the stranded wire when the wire nut is tightened. Without the bends, I found that the wire nut could easily be pulled off the connection. Repeat the process with the white and black wires. Note the extra set of wires is for the 15 amp outlet mounted to the lamp post, which typically feeds holiday decorations. See that? Putting that twist in there helps. I tried it before without the twist just for a test and this guy pulled right off. Okay. For outdoor applications, I like to add some extra protection from moisture and insects by wrapping the wire nuts with some electrical tape. Wrap it up nice like that. Just tuck those down just a little bit. Once the lamp is back together, turn on the power. I will use this tester to check the wiring of the outlet. Two green lights means the outlet is wired properly and the ground connection is intact. Okay, so now the conduit is all set. I was able to put the grass back. I did when I, when I dug it up. I tried to keep it in one piece, so I was able to just slap it back down. Back filled around the pole. Close up the opening. Cover the conduit. And we're done. Well, this concludes another video that was actually over a year in the making. Uh, it was probably well over a year ago that uh, the lamppost started tripping the GFCI and I just disconnected it. So I'm glad I finally got around to fixing it and sharing that work experience with you. Thank you so much for watching. If you do have any suggestions on what I can do differently, please let me know in the comments and I will work on improving my videos. Till then, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button, and when I do post a new video, you'll be the first to see it. Thank you so much for watching. This is Part 64 Guy. See you later.